emails, text messages. We have different types of friends. We have Facebook friends, Twitter friends, Snapchat friends, real friends, friends that we see in real life as actual human beings. We live in an incredibly fast-paced world. How can we still produce meaningful work? So I'm a documentary filmmaker. When I was in about middle school, I realized that I had some sort of depression disorder. Because of that, I've always had an intrinsic appreciation for underdogs. I love underdogs. Living with HIV, it's not the health aspect of it. I think it's the stigma that goes along with it. The people that I want to film say no. The people that I want to get money from say no. For me, no is the starting point. I kind of get turned on now by no. And it's kind of a stamp of like the process is beginning. We're in charge of our own story. You're the college boy? Yeah, I'm the college boy. Oh, for goodness sakes, are you in for trouble, baby? I went to get my birth control pills. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest way to establish trust is to establish a real communication. And so for anyone that I've ever filmed or followed, I very early on when I first meet them, I say, you can call me at any moment and I will pick up. You can call me before we start filming, while we're filming, after we're done filming, when it's actually being shown on TV, after it's shown on TV, and I will pick up the phone. Unless I'm like in therapy figuring out my own stuff and then I'll have to call you back, but I'll definitely call you back. And the reason for that is because inevitably, like any relationship, there's gonna be disagreements. They're gonna think, you know, you asked that question, that, that was like a trick question or something. Or they may even be watching the final product on TV and think that I showed them in a way that wasn't fair. And they may have a point. But the important part is establishing a communication so that they know that I'm coming from a place of trying to get their story right. Are you nervous a little bit? No. Everyone keeps asking me, why would I be nervous? You guys just said we're all family. <laughs> Ryan Ferguson was a young man charged with murder. When I was 14 years old, my mother was murdered. I've been wrongfully convicted of her death. Some people might define that as hell. I gave him my cell phone number. I couldn't call him because he was in prison, but he could call me at certain times. And whenever I saw that number, I would sure as hell pick up and we would talk. Over the course of several years before I even met him in prison, we developed a trust. And I think really the, the biggest way to show that you care is by being sensitive. When I was first living with the young woman that was homeless, I remember on the first afternoon we were talking and she said to me, so what hotel are you staying at tonight? And I said, I'm not staying at a hotel, I'm staying on, I'm sleeping on whatever street corner you're sleeping on. And those sorts of things immediately show that you have a, a real respect for their life. I followed a young woman named Kaylin. Kaylin was an incredible artist. She also happened to have cancer. She had three different types of cancer in her mid-20s. There was one night when she texted me and said, I'm not feeling well. I knew you can't film at a hospital, much less film at a hospital if you ask them a few hours ahead of time, much less if you don't ask them at all and you just show up in the emergency room. So what we did was we went to the hospital and we took out our phones, our iPhones, and we pretended as if we were playing video games. And we held them up like this. And we weren't playing video games, we were filming everything. And we had developed a relationship with Kaylin where she knew just as much as the filmmakers knew how important it was to capture this moment. If we're gonna follow Kaylin for a year, and we are going to be trying to show viewers or audiences what it's like to have cancer, well then, we sure better be there when she's in the emergency room with a, a severe pain, wondering if her cancer may be returning. That's a big part of her story. And so, although maybe beforehand, she would have thought, I'll never let you guys come in with cameras into an emergency room, incredibly sensitive moments. In this case, she was in on it. I think we have a tendency sometimes to look at life inside and then outside. What I mean by that is it's really important to think of what's going on around you. I uh, started, when I was in high school, a high school film festival. There wasn't an outlet for 
young high school kids like myself at the time to make movies and show them to a wider audience. So in the first year, we had a f like literally like three or four films were submitted. Probably two or three of them were mine. But we thought there was a nugget, there was something there. We started the All-American High School Film Festival, which is now the biggest high school film festival in the world, probably the, the proudest thing I've ever done. We seem to live in a world where everything is very extreme. Someone's either dead wrong or dead right. There's no nuance. My perspective is determined by what I see in scope and patterns, understanding that there are layers. How can we still produce meaningful work? First thing I do now when I go into a meeting is I cross my legs and I say, so what are you guys looking for? What can I help you out with? What do you need? And a lot of times they, an executive will look at me kind of confused because they're so used to the opposite. Everyone else walks into meetings and says what they're going to do. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And instead, if you hear what they're looking for, you can adapt accordingly. And when you do that, those sorts of things immediately show that you have a, a real respect and in turn you'll prove what you want to be doing to move forward, that you really care and want to get it right. I think that's true with so many things in life. It's true for a job that you want to get. It's true for a school that you want to go to, a promotion that you're looking for. A lot of things in life come down to making sure that you understand what everyone else around you is thinking and wanting. Thank you, guys.